Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in today's video I'm going to answer a common question. And this is also, can I mix my favorite serum with my favorite moisturizer? And the short answer is yes you can. However, you may also want to think about what you actually also want to achieve when doing so, or in some cases it may be best to also layer them. But those are the points that I want to go over so that you also have a better understanding why it may be best to layer them or why you can also mix them. Because there's no right and wrong, it's all about what you're looking for. And therefore I also have some example zones in front of me which also include some of the famous ingredients such as La Roche-Posay, Hyaluronic Acid, the Ordinary Niacinamide and Paula's Choice Vitamin C. And so what a zone basically is, is that the company is going to focus on a specific ingredient such as hyaluronic acid or niacinamide or vitamin C. That's their main focus ingredient. And then they're going to also use that specific in ingredient in a specific concentration, such as here you have 10% niacinamide or 15% vitamin C. And then the ingredients around it is more about, first of all, the formulation itself, how it feels on the skin, but it's also formulated in a way that it can also absorb quickly into the skin. Whereas also when having such ingredients in a moisturizer, you have also moisturizers that include niacinamide, already vitamin C, they still work. But first of all, the concentration of the vitamin C ingredient itself may not be as high. And also because of the other ingredients that a moisturizer include act like buffers, meaning that it's not going to penetrate as fast into the skin. You have pros and cons on both sides. So let me go over it. Let's say you're having problems with hyperpigmentation and you also want to use a vitamin C serum to help you fade your uh, hyperpigmentation. Using the serum on its own can be very beneficial because it's going to work a bit faster. However, depending also on your skin, what it actually needs, as well as the skin tolerance, it can also be very beneficial to mix it instead. I want to take vitamin C as an example because vitamin C, if you have a little bit more of a sensitive skin type, can also sting and burn on the skin. So if that would be, for example, the case for you, that you can't use your vitamin C serum on its own, then it may be best to also mix it with any moisturizer that you have at home. And this way, you also have basically your vitamin C concentration. You still have 15% of vitamin C in it when mixing it with your moisturizer. But because your moisturizer includes ingredients such as also maybe shea butter or also dimethicone, which is silicone, that can act like buffers so that it also slowly penetrates into the skin, it's less irritating, meaning you won't feel the stinging or burning anymore. And so this can be very beneficial that instead of layering them, you're going to mix them. And the same also goes with niacinamide, hyaluronic acid or any other specific serums that you also may have at home. Now, one thing that I also do want to emphasize is that also when mixing it with your moisturizer, um, first of all, when using your serum itself, depending also on the formulation, you may need to use um, a few drops so that you can evenly apply it all over your face. One drop won't be enough because if you're using one drop of your niacinamide serum, vitamin C serum, you can't even spread it all over your face. So you have to use more of it. But when mixing it with your moisturizer, since the moisturizer is already so easy to spread out, you're going to use less of your actual serum, still have that specific concentration and mix it with your moisturizer and the blending and application itself will also be simplified. You're not only going to save some product of your serum, but you still also will get the benefits out of it. But it's going to work a bit slower because your moisturizer acts like a buffer. And so I also want to include a little demonstration where I'm also going to choose, let's say I have a few moisturizers right here. It works with um, like any moisturizer, as long as you like that specific moisturizer and it feels good on the skin, then go ahead and do so. Personally, I really like the La Roche-Posay Tolerant Ultra Fluid. That's one I really like. And I'm going to mix it, let's say with the vitamin C serum from Paula's Choice. Now, usually serums also have a thinner texture. So when also using them, that's what I meant. See, you can see that the texture of this one is very thin, so you would need to use more than one drop. Otherwise, you can't even spread it all over your face. But when also mixing it with your moisturizer, you can save some product. 
So I'm going to use now a pea-sized amount of my moisturizer and I'm also going to mix it in the palm of my hand so that you also can see it. Like so. And then you can also decide, either use one drop of your serum or maybe two to three drops. This is something that you have to play around with. There's no right and wrong. It's more about what will work best for your skin. And I'm going to stick with two drops. So, and then I'm going to mix it in the palm of my hand. And then I like to use it between my hands and also gently apply it all over my face as well as neck. So once you also have evenly covered your mixture, your serum and moisturizer together and have applied it evenly on the face, I do also want to emphasize that I personally do not recommend also getting it close to your eyes, nor use your moisturizer and serum that you have mixed together also on your eyelids, nor too close to your mouth. Because for example, with vitamin C, or if you have also a specific serum, such as also retinol, for example, if you're using it too close to the eye, since the eyes are already a little bit more sensitive, you have to be a bit more careful on the eye contour, but do not get it into your eyes, meaning do not get it too close along the eyelashes. And I do not recommend using it on the eyelids either because if the product is going to melt because you have a lot of movement on it then it also still can get into your eyes and irritate the eye area. So that's really important. Please do not get it into your eyes nor into your mouth. That's really important. And then just go ahead and just evenly blend it all over your face, maybe your neck and decolletage, depending also on the way you also want to use the product. But be careful of your eyes and mouth area. So you basically can also mix any other serum that you also have at home with your moisturizer if you're looking for those benefits. Like you have pros and cons on both sides. Sometimes layering may be a bit more beneficial for your skin needs as well as also what your skin can tolerate. But sometimes mixing them can also be very beneficial. None of them is right or wrong. It's more about what you're looking for, what your skin can tolerate and what your skin actually needs. Now there's one more point that I also do want to emphasize, which can also mix together. And this is also, for example, AHAs or BHAs. Now, sometimes they are being called exfoliating acids, but sometimes they're also being called serums. And therefore, I have a few right here. I have the ordinary lactic acid, which is called a water-based serum. I have the ordinary glycolic acid toning solution. And I also have Paula's Choice 10% AHA as well as Paula's Choice BHA. So this is basically the same thing if you have an exfoliant. You can also mix it with your moisturizer to also make sure that it's not going to quickly absorb into the skin. Because sometimes, for example, for me, when I'm using the Ordinary Glycolic Acid Toning Solution, that one is a bit too strong for what my skin can tolerate. When I'm using it um, too often, um, in a row and my skin is already a bit more sensitive to it because the strength is quite high to what my skin can actually tolerate, then it also may be best to also mix it with your moisturizer. Of course, that's personal preference. But if you're currently experiencing like stinging or burning with your current exfoliant, try to also mix it with your moisturizer so that you also can reduce the likelihood of getting those irritations because it's going to slowly penetrate into the skin Therefore, experiencing the like stinging or also burning is less likely to happen when also diluting it with your moisturizer. And so I also want to give you a little demonstration with this as well. I'm not going to apply it to my face because I have already applied something, but I still want to share with you how you can also mix those two. Now I'm going to use the Ordinary Lactic Acid as my example. And I'm going to mix it with the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factor since I have that one as well. Now I'm going to use again about a pea-sized amount of the moisturizer, like so. And then I'm also going to add a few drops of lactic acid. Again, you can use one drop, you can also use two to three drops, that's fine too. So again, with that specific mixture, play around with what your skin can also tolerate and what works the best for your skin, that's really important.
Again, I'm going to stick with two drops. And then mixing it in the palm of my hand. Again, you do not only save some product because especially with lactic acid when also applying it to your face you need more than two to three drops because it is so thin in texture and when also diluting it with your moisturizer it can not only help you to um, avoid the irritations that some um, like AHAs or VHAs can give you but it also can help you to save some product and then again you just would take the product blend it all over and then gently also use it all over your face and neck again Please also read the directions on what it says on the back of the packaging. Some AHAs do not recommend to also be used on the eye contour, but generally speaking, do not get it into your eyes. I do not recommend using it on your eyelids and do not get it close to your lips because your eyes and lips are pretty sensitive where it also can burn and sting. So to avoid this from happening, please also do not get too close to those areas. But generally speaking, you can also mix your AHA or BHA with your moisturizer and that's fine too. It can help you also to reduce certain irritations and still have the benefits of getting a mild exfoliating part in your skincare routine. Now there's one important thing that I also do want to cover and also go over with what you cannot mix it. And this is also sometimes you also can come across some moisturizers that also include SPF. SPF 25, 30 or even 50 sometimes. I have Paula's Choice um, moisturizer that also includes SPF in it or like the Alta MD which is also kind of like a moisturizer with sunscreen. It's just a different like term that they are using but both include moisturizing ingredients and have sun protection in it. Now please do not dilute your serum or exfoliant with your sunscreen since this can also influence the sun protection. So if it says like SPF 30, it may not even give you the SPF 30 anymore when also mixing your serum with your sun protection. So therefore, please avoid mixing your serum with a moisturizer that includes SPF. Only mix it with moisturizers that do not include it because it cannot influence the protection that it's supposed to give you because it has no sun protection in it. And then also another point that I want to do is also please do not mix your serums or exfoliators with also common sunscreens. Um, that's the same thing. It can influence also the sun protection. So that um, also making sure that this won't be the case, please do not mix them. Layer your serums or exfoliators at first and then use your sunscreen on top. But I do not recommend mixing your serum or exfoliator with the sunscreens either. So when it includes SPF, basically do not mix it. If it does not include SPF, you are fine to mix it and also have fun with it and play around with it. So those are basically the points that I want to go over and also cover in today's video. I do hope that you also find it helpful with the information that I have shared with you as well as also with the little demonstration. Now, if you find it helpful and if you like this video, please also don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.